Chapter 31 The Earth Element Spell You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Kevin was delighted, it had been a long time since he had had so much fun, when they went in the other gallery, and he saw that the monsters that appeared were goblins and night goblins, he asked Axel. You told me that the goblins' blood was in great demand, right? Axel confirmed with a simple nod of his head and Kevin then gave him his daggers. He started to warm up his wrists now protected by the hand wraps, and after winking at Axel who was still wondering what he was up to, he rushed towards the eight goblins and the three night goblins that were in front of him. Axel who still had Kevin's daggers in his hands leaned against the mountain wall and watched him fight. Kevin was a real inspiration, he killed all the goblins by just punching them in the throat or in the heart, when that wasn't enough though, he just simply broke their neck. He was moving a little faster than before and he was much stronger, it only took him 10 minutes to overcome all these monsters and he had killed them all with his bare hands. Axel hissed to express his admiration when Kevin was walking back to him and said praising him. You're sure you want to be a mage, because you would undoubtedly be the best recruit the fighters ever had at the Sun sect. Kevin chuckled and said to him. I'm 100% sure. Besides, you are already an exceptional fighter, it's better for us that I become a mage, so that we will form a perfect and unbeatable couple. Axel smiled and said. Are you trying to seduce me with your sweet words? Kevin scratched the back of his head a little bit embarrassed and confessed, blushing. Maybe. Well, you're not the only one afraid of being abandoned you know, I'm an orphan too, and even though I was the head of the largest organization of assassins in my world, I have lived alone and trusted no one. He added sincerely, blushing even more. I love being with you, I trust you completely and I'm starting to fear that this happiness will suddenly stop if you decide to leave me. Axel put his hand on his cheek and caressed it, he just wanted to tease him, he didn't know Kevin had the same fears as him. So, he said without hesitation. Don't worry, this won't happen. He took him in his arms and took the opportunity to kiss him for a long time. When he saw that Kevin was staying in his arms not moving, his head in the crook of his neck, he asked him suddenly worried. Are you okay? Kevin chuckled and then said, after kissing his neck. I'm perfectly fine, I just want to enjoy this moment a little longer. Axel then kissed his forehead and tightened his embrace around him, after a moment, he asked him too curious to restrain himself. Have you made it to level 10? Kevin pulled away from him and checked his messages. After killing 8 goblins and 3 night goblins he had received 4 750 gold and 1 560 exp points. But that wasn't all, a message caught his attention more than the others and he then said to Axel smiling. Yes, I just got to level 10. He then read the message to Axel. Congratulations, you have just completed the monthly quest. Reach level 10 before the end of this month. Reward 1. Healing Potion Low Grade Times 5. Reward 2. Spirit Potion Low Grade Times 5. Reward 3. Energy Potion Low Grade Times 5. Kevin looked at Axel and asked him. Do you have any idea what these potions are for? Axel then said to him looking stunned. If that's what I think then these potions are very precious even if they are low grade, the spirit potion must allow to recover soul force points and the one of energy must allow to recover chakra points, but you should check them Kev just to be sure. Kevin obediently opened his inventory screen and took out a potion from each, he then said to him after putting them back in his inventory. You were right. That's exactly it, the spirit potion allows to recover 50 soul force points and the energy potion 50 chakra points. He added with a smile. Plus, the store is now open so we can also buy and sell, I wonder what will be there. Axel then said to him. We will have plenty of time to see what is inside, let's keep moving forward, I can't wait to see what other kind of monsters will appear. Kevin nodded. You're right let's keep moving. Axel guided him to another gallery and said. Those who are coming are for me, and there's no point in negotiating. 
Kevin looked curiously towards the back of the gallery and he saw three monster notifications appear, they were all elite night golems and their level were quite impressive, level 36, 42 and 45, Kevin knew his own limits so he said to Axel. Be careful. The golems were a heap of large stones stacked on top of each other that looked like a human form. What surprised Kevin even more was that they didn't have any weapons, but he understood why soon after. The golems could use spells, and they could throw sharp stones with their hands or their mouths, it was really terrifying. Luckily, Axel was very skillful and managed to dodge most of their attacks while he simply destroyed the ones he couldn't dodge. Kevin thought back to his active observation skill, he decided to try to copy the attack spell of the golems and a message popped up instantly. Earth Element Spell Level 1 Throwing stones, need 150 soul force points to activate the observation skill, yes slash no. Kevin had more than enough soul force points so he thought yes, and a new message appeared shortly after. Congratulations, you succeed to copy the Earth Element Spell Level 1. Throwing stones. Awesome. Was the only thought that came to Kevin's mind. All he had to do was find a place where spiritual energy was concentrated with the earth element and he could start using this spell. Axel after having beheaded the three monsters came back to him with a dazzling smile on his face. He took him by the waist and twirled him in the air before putting him down on the ground he said to him excitedly. It was not a box these golems were guarding, it was a highly desirable ore for crafting weapons. In fact, this is the same ore that was used to craft my sword, it's called Nerudium, and thanks to this or, we can associate an element with the weapon that will be crafted with, isn't it too cool Kev? Chapter 32 Brown Particles You are listening at NovelFull.audio Axel added, guiding him towards the ore in question which was still trapped in the rock and which had a bright red color. Kev, this is truly unexpected, it's worth a hell of money. Fortunately, and thanks to the Sun sect, I learned how to extract it without damaging it and I have everything I need to do it, but it will take a good hour I think. Kevin then said to him, he just thought of something. It's okay, don't worry, you can take all the time you need to do it. Axel, do you mind if I meditate while you are extracting the nerudium, I want to try and see if I can absorb particles from the earth element, after all the golems haven't stopped using this element, it's worth a try. Axel looked at him puzzled and asked. If you absorb particles from the earth element does that mean you can use this element as well? Kevin nodded and said. I just have to manage to absorb 200 of them and then I could absorb them everywhere and use this element like the ones I already have. Axel couldn't believe it, he had never heard of a mage that could use more than three elements, Kevin was already one of the exceptions. But if he could master any other element, it would mean he could outdo the best mages of the capital. Axel then said to him without hesitation. Sure, do as you want Kev, I'll take care of extracting the ore and if ever monsters come to pay us a visit, I'll watch over you, rest assured that I will protect you against all the danger. Kevin snuggled up in his arms one last time and after kissing him he said. I know you will. Axel caressed his face before letting him go and he watched him going away a bit and sit cross-legged where he had fought the golems. Axel didn't know much about mages, with Alan he mostly talked about their day.to. Day life, and what they wanted to do later. But when Alan had seen that Kevin slept off in the giant bird, he explained to him that the meditation required a lot of concentration and that was why it was very dangerous at the beginning, because the mind wasn't trained to support this kind of pressure. He was surprised to see that in just a few breaths, Kevin had managed to calm and slow down his heartbeat and yes thanks to his developed senses he could even hear his heartbeat. He didn't know if Kevin had already started meditating but he chose to concentrate on the ore and he began to extract it very slowly, little by little, because what he saw was perhaps only the visible part of it. If they were lucky enough, maybe more ore would be hidden in the rock. While still wondering if they should keep the nerudium to themselves and craft weapons with it or just sell it, the first nerudium block detached itself from the wall and what he saw behind made his smile widened and he thought then, no need to worry anymore, problem solved. Behind the first nerudium block was even more nerudium which looked to be even better as it was even darker. 
The bright red had turned to a blood red, the most wanted color, and it looked like there is still a lot of it in the rock. While Axel gloated and took care of extracting the precious ore, Kevin was congratulated himself to have this idea. When he started to meditate he first saw a few silver particles and about the same number of blue particles, he found that was a little strange but after thinking about it he thought that maybe there was a source of water in the mountain, because during his last meditations he normally saw three times more silver particles than blue particles. Once he had absorbed the first particles, he decided to wait a bit and try to concentrate more, what he was looking for after all were particles of the earth element. He tried to focus more around him, on the areas where the fight had taken place, and suddenly they appeared, brown particles, and the more he concentrated the more they came. He began to absorb them, and immediately after, more were appearing, as he absorbed them a sense of serenity took hold of him. When the mages absorbed the particles of the elements, it was as if they created a bond with them, the lightning particles tickled him and gave him energy, the water particles was cold and gave a feeling of freshness, the wind particles gave a feeling to be light and now the earth particles gave him a feeling of serenity. After an hour of meditation the usual message appeared and he was not surprised at the result as he really focused only on the particles of the earth element. Congratulations, you have just completed the daily quest. Strengthen your soul force, the reward has been sent. Summary of your meditation, Lightning Element Level 5 5015 slash 20,000 Water Element Level 3 1 221 slash 5,000 Wind Element Level 1 332 slash 1,000 Earth Element Level 1 12 slash 1,000 Fire Element Level 0 0 slash 200 He quickly left his meditative state when he saw that he had achieved his goal, and his only desire was to share this good news with Axel. Only, this time he forgot that meditation required a lot of concentration and therefore used a lot of energy, and when he hurried up to join Axel, he suddenly felt dizzy. Fortunately, Axel who always kept an eye on Kevin had not missed anything of his behavior and he rushed to support him, he asked him worried. Kev. Babe. Are you alright? Kevin had black spots in front of his eyes and his ears were ringing, but he had heard very well how Axel had just called him. Did you just call me babe? Axel blushed and told him. Well, I felt like calling you this way but if you don't like it, it's okay too, I will keep calling you only by your name. Kevin chuckled and said. No, I like it. Fuck Axel, hold me tight, I felt really dizzy, my legs are shaking, my ears are ringing and I can't see anything at all, I feel really bad. A moan of pain escaped him as a headache that looked like a jackhammer began to pound in his head. Axel immediately took him in his arms and he could see that Kevin was in great pain, a thin layer of perspiration was already starting to appear on his forehead. Chapter 33 Helping Each Other, NSFW, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Fortunately, Alan had warned him that this might happen and he had given him a bottle of water which was mixed with magical herbs to relieve mental fatigue. Axel sat down against the rock wall, Kevin still in his arms, then he took the bottle from his magic bag and made him drink a few sips. He was holding him and hugging him tight, he then began to massage his forehead and the top of his head. Alan had told him that it could help relieve the pain, and right now he was ready to try anything that could help Kevin to fell better. Ten minutes later, Kevin seemed to finally recover his spirits. Kevin who had been surprised by this sudden pain asked him doubtfully. Axel, do you know what had happened to me? Axel looked at his beautiful green eyes and said while caressing his cheek. Alan warned me that this could happen. You have to slow down a bit on the meditation Kev. He told me that if you continue to mentally exhaust yourself like that, at the beginning it will only be a terrible headache. But if you don't stop for a while, it will be worse and you can fall into a coma of several days, or several weeks. Kevin straightened up slowly but stayed in his arms, he said. Okay, I'll slow down the meditation, I promise. But this terrible headache was really worth it, I managed to absorb enough earth element particles to get to level 1, I now have an affinity with 4 elements. Axel found it hard to be happy for him and ended up saying. Kev. Babe, 
Promise me you'll be careful, it was really scary to see you like that. Kevin kissed him a first time on his lips and said. I promise I won't do it again. He kissed him a second time a little longer and said. I won't do meditation again today and I won't do it tomorrow too, okay? Axel nodded and began to kiss Kevin passionately, this experience had been really stressful and he was having trouble controlling himself. He kissed his lips, licked them, sucked them, nibbled them, Kevin finally opened his mouth and let him in, their tongues met and the fire of passion began slowly to consume them both. Kevin felt the heat from the excitement of their kissing drift dangerously down to a part of his body that was starting to grow and feel cramped in his underwear. He didn't want to stop right now, he still wanted to feel that fire that only Axel could ignite in him. He changed position and straddled him, when his erection came in contact with Axel's, both moan with pleasure and while Kevin had his hands behind Axel's head to deepen their kisses, the latter had his hands on Kevin's hips and he pressed him even more against his erection. Axel knew he had to be careful not to rush things with Kevin, but how was he supposed to resist the temptation when his man was rubbing his erection against his, he was driving him crazy with desire. Dil V Co Axel changed their position and Kevin found himself lying on the ground, Axel on top of him and suddenly he realized what he had just done. If he lost his virginity here he could only blame himself, after all, this time, it was him who had provoked Axel. Kevin wanted to try to coax him to stop before it's too late, but before he could speak, Axel put his finger to his lips and he told him while continuing to press his erection against his. Kev, I know you're not ready to go further, but could we just help each other out, do you want to try? Kevin's face had turned crimson red, but after looking into Axel's beautiful blue deep eyes that had darkened because of his desser for him, he asked shyly. How? Axel had already expected to be rejected so when he heard Kevin. He wasted no time and said to him before he could change his mind. Just with our hands, let me touch you. Babe, I want you so much, let me just touching you with my hand you won't regret it, and if you don't want to touch me I can do it myself don't worry. Kevin shook his head and said. I want to touch you too, but before we start. Kevin squirmed and took off his sweater and his T-dot shirt, he had just changed them and he didn't want to have to do it again. As he was the one at the bottom, he will be the one to receive their semen on his body. Axel straightened up and also took off his clothes which he placed under Kevin's head so that he will be more comfortably installed. Then Axel, who had just obtained the agreement of his man, slightly lowered Kevin's pants and his underpants and immediately took his member in his hand. Kevin was surprised by this sensation, Axel's hand was warm and enveloped him completely and when he started to stroke him he couldn't help but grip his shoulders and arch himself under the effect of the wave of pleasure that he felt. Axel then kissed him and he whispered in his ear. Babe, touch me too, I want to feel your hand on me, please stroke me. Kevin blushed even more, it was the sexiest thing he had never heard, to tell the truth, he was in a hurry to feel Axel's member in his hand and see his reaction when he will start to stroke it. He then stopped wasting more time to think and put his hand inside Axel's pants. And, after releasing his really huge erection, he began to stroke it too. He felt his breathing changed and Axel leaned his forehead against his, he said to him. Kev, it's good, damn it's so good. Axel increased the rhythm of his hand around Kevin's member and he was rewarded with moans of pleasure which ended up driving him completely mad with desire he then said. Kev, faster. Oh fuck, faster babe, so good, so freaking good. They both finally succumbed to desire and Axel ejaculated on Kevin's stomach and chest just seconds after Kevin had released too. Kevin then said to him. Damn Axel, it was so good, so so good. Axel kissed him one more time and said. We can do it again whenever you want babe, let me help you with that. Axel got up and got a bottle of water and a towel from his magic bag, these were things he always had with him because of his intense training schedule. He walked back to Kevin who let him clean his body with a smile of contentment on his face. Chapter 34 Weaknesses You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. When he was clean again and that they were both dressed and equipped, Kevin then asked him, looking curiously at the ore that was still trapped in the rock. 
Is it another or? Axel replied with a smile. No babe, it's the same, but the one you see there is of better quality than the one you have seen on the surface. Axel added, while he hugged him from behind. I haven't finished extracting it yet as you can see, but it's definitely worth the time wasting here. He said looking in his eyes. Kev, in two months there is a very important tournament in the capital, and I know someone there who can craft us the weapons we want with this ore, and if you become powerful enough by then, you may be able to introduce the lightning element inside our weapons. Kevin asked him surprised. You don't want to sell it anymore. Axel caressed his face and said. We're going to sell the nerudium of lower quality and keep this one for ourselves, the weapons we can craft with it it's priceless, trust me okay. Kevin nodded and said. Can I do my stretching exercises while waiting for you? Axel nodded but added hastily. But only stretching exercises, no workout, no running, no meditation, understood. Kevin smiled at him and said to calm him down. I know, I know, I'll be a good boy, I promise. Axel kissed him and went back to extracting the nerudium, and Kevin before starting his stretches, decided to take a look of his skills menu. It had been a while since he had taken a look of his skills, and he remembered that skills were something very important in the virtual reality games he had played in his home world. The holographic screen appeared and his innate skills had not changed, his warrior spirit was still at level 1, so he quickly moved on and was pleasantly surprised by what he found out after that. Passive Skills, Perception Level 2 Allows you to see your opponent's level and stats if it is not more than 40 levels above yours. Allow you to see the grade and stats of items and the grade of boxes. Soul force required to activate. None recovery level 2. 20 minutes of rest allows you to recover 50 soul force points. 30 minutes of meditation allows you to recover 150 soul force points. It was great. Now just by doing meditation he could regain a lot of soul force points. But the sequel caught his attention even more and he smirked when he saw the skill that had appeared. Active skills, observation level 1, see more, vital points targeting level 1. All vital points become immediately visible regardless of the opponent's level. Soul force required to activate. 50 this skill was going to be really useful to him. He was already an expert in vital points on the human body, but he had realized that monsters did not necessarily have the same weaknesses as humans. This skill would allow him to be much more effective at killing them. He then checked if he could use the new spell he had just learned, it was something that intrigued him a lot, being able to fight thanks to magic and casting spells remained a complete mystery to him. Mastery of the Elements, Lightning Element Level 5 5015-20,000. Spell. None Water Element Level 3. 1221-5000. Spell. None Wind Element Level 1. 332-1000. Spell. None Earth Element Level 1. 12-1000. Spell Level 1. Throwing Stones, Soul Force Required to Activate. 20, Fire Element Level 0. 0 200 he figured out that he would only have to think of that spell to activate it, as long as he had enough soul force points he could use this spell, if his guess was correct then it was just too cool. Kevin was really pleased and he finally closed the holographic screen and began his stretches. He was observing Axel who was extracting the nerudium, and he felt his cheeks getting hot and his heart racing when he thought back to what had just happened. Axel, who had heard the change in Kevin's heartbeat, turned his head in his direction to see what he was doing and when he looked at him, Kevin blushed even more and he turned to the other side to hide his embarrassment. Axel bit his lower lip to prevent to laugh, he didn't want to upset his man, Kevin was just damn too cute. How this man who was a war machine could have remained so innocent, it was a real mystery to him, but he was also very happy about it. Knowing that he was his first boyfriend made him jubilati, and he would do anything to be the only one for the rest of his life. Thirty minutes later, Axel finally gave a sigh of relief, he had just finished to mine the ore, Kevin came up to him and asked him with a smile. Have you finished? Axel nodded, 
he had put the lower quality nerudium with the bodies of the monsters and the high quality one in Kevin's magic bag, he said to him while handing him his magic bag. We can continue now, we are done from that side, we have to return to the first gallery and take the other path. He got closer to Kevin and put a hand around his waist, he leaned slightly and swiftly he put his other hand behind his knees and he trapped him in his arms. Kevin cursed and struggled. Fuck Axel, I'm not a girl, put me down. Axel kissed him to silence him and then said. I like to hold you like this and we are only the two of us here, no one will see you. Kevin stopped struggling and asked instead. Why are you carrying me? Axel's smile widened and he told him, knowing that he would be delighted after what he was going to say. I haven't been able to test my new speed with the help of my sword stats yet, I'm curious how fast I can move now. Kevin's scowl face immediately lit up and Axel could see his eyes sparkling with excitement, he told him, while hiding his victorious smile from him. Babe, put your arms around my neck and hold me tight. Kevin did so immediately, speed was one of his weaknesses, and the fact that Axel liked to carry him like a girl had completely vanished from his thoughts. Axel said again. Just keep your eyes open Kev to enjoy the speed, and don't worry I'm holding you tight. I won't let anything happen to you. Chapter 35 The Boss Room You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Kevin didn't have time to answer him, Axel was already gone like a rocket, and in just a few seconds they had already returned to the main gallery. Axel took the opportunity to go around the walls running on them, and thanks to this new speed he could even continue to run on the ceiling without feeling the weight of gravity, it was completely exhilarating and judging by Kevin's enthusiastic screams he wasn't the only one who enjoyed this moment. Axel finally slowed down and he entered the second gallery, the one where the boss was. On this side there was only one tunnel and all the monsters were gathered in one place. All the way, he kept his eyes wide open in case there were any other wonders like the Nerudium, but he found nothing. He finally stopped in front of the entrance to the boss room which was closed by two large dark red wooden doors and huge handles that appeared to be gold. He put Kevin on the ground and said. Behind this door is the dungeon boss, with other powerful monsters and a few who are weaker. How are you feeling? A creepy smile appeared on Kevin's face and he told him as he walked to the door. Don't worry, I won't get in your way, but I will fight with you, and as soon as I have any openings I will hit them. Kevin put his hands on the two gold rings that served as handles and thanks to his strength point stats, he just needed to exert a little pressure and they snapped off the door, he weighed them and seemed satisfied with what he felt, he immediately put them in his magic bag. As Axel looked at him taken aback he said to him. Well what, there is no small profit, we can sell them easily. Axel shook his head helplessly and asked him serious again. Ready. Kevin nodded and Axel then kicked down the massive wooden door with one kick. Kevin took his two daggers, one in each of his hands, and as he entered the boss room, the monster notifications began to pop up. Kevin squeezed his hands tighter around his daggers, they were going to have to face a lot of monsters, there were five night orcs, three level 12 and two level 13, three elite night goblins level 25, 26, and 31, two elite night golems of level 22 and 30 and finally four elite night orcs of level 28, 40, 44, and 48. Kevin gave these information to Axel and suddenly he felt an evil and powerful aura, he looked in that direction and unsurprisingly it was the boss of this dungeon. Stats, Name Warrior Orc, Dungeon Boss, Race Demon Level 68.HP 3600-3600 Kevin wondered why he could only see these information but he wasted no time and immediately gave it to Axel. Axel only wanted one thing right now, and that was for Kevin to get out of here as soon as possible. But alone, he wasn't sure he could beat them all, at least not without getting hurt. Kevin could see that Axel was stressed, so he activated his new skill, Vital Points Targeting, and used it on the four different types of monsters facing them, the Night Orcs didn't count, they were too weak to waste 50 Soul Force Points. So it cost him 200 Soul Force Points, but the information he got was worth it. 
He quickly told Axel where all the vital points of the strongest monsters were and he told him to try to relax and concentrate on the fight. We're going together, just let me kill alone the weaker monsters so I can finish the optional quest too. For the rest of the fight I will let you go first and I will stay in support, if I find an opening to hit their vital points I will do it, but I will not put myself in danger I promise. The boss will probably only intervene at the end of the fight. As for the others, I've watched you fight them before, so I'm confident enough to say that I can avoid their attack, stop worrying about me and focus on the fight. Axel recovered immediately, he tended to forget that Kevin was anything but an amateur, and the information he had just given him about their vital points was going to save him time and energy. Axel then charged at the first group of monsters that turned out to be the elite night goblins, while Kevin busied himself with killing the night orcs. Strangely enough, the other monsters didn't join in the fight, that made it easier for them. The monsters that Axel faced were rather weak for him, and he remembered in time what Kevin had done earlier to keep all their precious blood, he decided to follow his example and also simply break their necks. Axel killed the two who were stronger quickly and he then wondered if Kevin would receive any experience points if they fight the same monster, it was worth a try though. He broke a leg of the last elite night goblin that remained and this one dropped to his knees. He then blocked his arms behind his back so he couldn't move and he saw that Kevin was done with the five night orcs. Kevin was already coming back to him, so he said to him with a smile. Kill him babe, I want to check something. Kevin wondered what Axel was up to but they were in the middle of a fight so he went straight to him and immediately broke the neck of the last elite night goblin without even blinking. Axel was wondering if he was starting to have a problem, because watching Kevin kill monsters in cold blood like it was the most natural thing in the world, made him even sexier in his eyes. Kevin was very far from guessing Axel's thoughts and that's when the sound of the system echoed in his head and he looked at Axel speechless, the latter saw the change in his expression and he asked him curiously. It worked. Can you get experience points even if you don't kill them alone? Kevin just had the time to nod when the scream of the dungeon boss rang out and the pressure he felt then made him fall to his knees. Axel didn't have time to catch him before he hit the ground and an uncontrollable rage seized him, he turned back to the dungeon boss and an animal growl escaped his throat. Chapter 36 The Wolf's Fury You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. Axel positioned himself between Kevin and the rest of the monsters and simply took the time to remove the scabbard with his swords and throw it at Kevin's feet. He already knew what was going to happen, full of rage and fury he instantly shape-shifted into his original wolf form. Sometimes when he lost control of his emotions, shape-shifting was inevitable, but he could still maintain control over his animal instincts. He wasted no time and decapitated the two elite night golems with his paws, and again focused all his attention on the dungeon boss who was fighting alongside his best soldiers. In his wolf form he was more powerful and faster than in his human form, he easily defeated the boss's elite soldiers and he sent them one after the other to Kevin, for him to give them the finishing blow and thus gain experience points. When the moment finally came to face the warrior orc, his growl of fury echoed throughout the room and surely unconsciously the warrior orc took a few steps back. But he recovered quickly and a fierce fight ensued. Kevin still couldn't keep up with their moves when they were at full speed, and he had to take cover as the range of their attacks was very impressive. Dot Axel's clothes were still laying on the ground torn on all sides, and Kevin had used his swords to deliver the final blows to the poor elite night orcs he had sent to him and who were already half dot dead. Axel looked hurt, he could see a gash on his right front paw and a bigger gash along his side, a lot of blood was dripping from his injuries. Kevin was starting to worry seriously when finally he saw Axel grab the throat of the warrior orc with his fangs and soon after the system sound echoed in his head and he knew it was to announce the death of the dungeon boss. Kevin rushed over to Axel and said hastily. Axel, quickly shapeshift back into your human form, we have to deal with your injuries and fast. Axel obeyed immediately, as Kevin was safe now, his wolf's fury was appeased and he was able to shape-shift into his human form again. When Kevin saw that the cut in his thigh was cut open to the bone he couldn't help but swore, and the wound on his side was pretty bad as well. 
Kevin didn't think twice, this kind of injuries was beyond his skill, so he opened the holographic screen of his system and chose the menu store, he thought then to buy healing potions. Store, healing potion low grade. Instantly recovers 10 HP, cost 50 gold coins. Healing potion medium grade. Instantly recovers 100 HP, cost 200 gold coins. Healing potion high grade. Instantly recovers 1000 HP, cost 800 gold coins. Healing potion legendary grade. Instantly recovers all HP, cost 2000 gold coins. They had plenty of money so Kevin didn't check Axel's stats and he directly purchased a healing potion legendary grade. When it appeared in his hands he immediately gave it to Axel who drank it without saying anything. When Axel saw that all of his wounds were gone and that he was feeling perfectly fine he looked at Kevin puzzled and asked him. It wasn't the healing potion low grade, was it? Kevin did not answer right away, he first checked Axel's body to be sure he was okay. Then, when he was satisfied he said to him. Of course not, it was a healing potion legendary grade, it allows you to regenerate all your HP, I found it in the system store. Axel was really astonished and he exclaimed. This system is so cool. This means that even at the point of death this potion can heal us instantly. Kevin nodded and in the meantime he had pulled out a water bottle and a towel to help Axel cleanse himself of all the blood he had on him. When he was clean and dressed he asked Kevin. So babe, what did you find? Kevin knew exactly what he wanted to know so he didn't keep him waiting and said. There's just a high-grade box over there, I haven't seen anything else. Axel chuckled and said. Why do you look so disappointed, a high-grade box is already a reward more than satisfying, let's see that. This box wasn't hidden but it was in a dark corner and it was completely black, if you didn't approach closer you couldn't see it at all, and actually, they could find it only because they knew that a box was there. Axel broke his lock and opened it. He waited quietly for Kevin to report back to him, and Kevin's smile widened as he was reading to Axel the information of this box. High grade box. 12 500 gold coins. High grade necklace. Protect your mind against mental fatigue, plus 100% efficiency while you meditate. High grade bracelet. Plus 500 chakra points, plus 20% resistance to magic. Kevin exclaimed first. Axel, these are really amazing rewards. He took the bracelet which looked like a black leather bracelet and put it on Axel's wrist, this bracelet was simple and discreet, it was perfect for him. Axel then took the necklace, it looked like the silver chain Kevin already had on him except that the chain was made of a metal he didn't recognize, and it was completely black. He helped Kevin to wear it and asked him. Does that mean you can meditate without the risk of having a headache now? Kevin nodded and said. Not only my mental fatigue issue is resolved, but the particles that I will absorb, will double thanks to that necklace. Axel sat down against the rock wall and motioned to Kevin to join him, the latter came to join him and Axel made him sit between his legs with his back leaning to him, he then whispered in his ear. Give me a summary of what you gained with the system by facing these monsters. Kevin then pouted and said. I didn't really face them, you just let me kill them. Axel found him really too cute and he explained to him what had happened. I'm sorry Kev, my wolf part took over my human part when I saw you fall to your knees, the rage that I felt at that moment was too intense and I couldn't stop anymore the shape-shifting process. Kevin snuggled into his arms and said. It's okay, this was the first time I saw you fight in your wolf form and it was really impressive. Axel kissed his head and caressed his stomach with his hands that he had slipped under his clothes, he asked him again. So, what did you gain babe? Chapter 37 An unexpected reward you are listening at novelfull.audio Kevin replied with a smile. Wait a minute, there are a lot of messages, let me sort them out first. Right after he said that the messages disappeared and when they reappeared Kevin smiled widened and he said to Axel. I just got a summary let me tell you how much we've won. Summary, optional quest 1 and 2 completed. Reward 1. 
15 stats points. Reward 2. 13500 gold coins. Reward 3. Medium grade box times 2 killing demons you earn 20075 gold coins, you earn from killing monsters with Axel 16 625 gold coins, 8 860 EXP points, you earn from killing monsters with Axel 7 750 EXP points. You have leveled up 6 times, 6 points have been added to all your stats. An additional reward has been granted for your exceptional results. Reward Legendary Grade Box Axel was rendered speechless, that was completely unexpected. Kevin said to him. Let me check my inventory and take out those boxes. He added when he saw that Axel seemed shocked by these rewards. Your idea of dot letting me kill these monsters was great Axel. Thanks to you I gained 6 levels at once, we won 20,000 gold coins, and I guess that if we have gotten this legendary grade box is also due to that. Kevin pulled out the 3 boxes from his inventory and he could clearly see which of the 3 was the legendary grade box, it was much taller than the others and looked like it was cut directly from a huge block of diamond. Axel finally said to him still stunned. I didn't know that it was possible to get a legendary grade box, it's the first time I see one like this. Open it Kev. Kevin wanted to start with this box as well, so he opened it and swallowed before reading the information to Axel. Legendary grade box. High grade magical crystal large size times 2. Trinium 3 kilograms. Or that allows to craft legendary grade weapons, 3 elements can be introduced inside. Axel then repeated. Trinium. You really said trinium. And 3 kilograms it's enough. It's enough to craft us a large sword and 2 daggers of your choice. Kev, this or is something that the Sun sect will never be able to get, even the nobles of the capital dream of that or, and I'm not sure my contact in the capital has the skills to craft us weapons with it. Kevin then said to him putting a hand on his cheek. Even if your contact doesn't have the skills to craft us weapons with this trinium, he will surely know someone who can do it, so don't worry about that. Kevin then opened the other two boxes and the system summarized them for him again. Medium grade box X2. 8 200 gold coins. 10 times healing potion medium grade. Instantly recovers 100 HP 10 times spirit potion medium grade. Instantly recovers 200 soul force points. 10 times energy potion medium grade. Instantly recovers 200 chakra points. Axel then said to him after taking the time to think. Kev, we have finished this dungeon, I think it's better if we go back now, one dungeon is enough for today. We can have lunch in Dawn City if you want, it will take us 1 h 30 to get there, and then we can go directly to sell the bodies of the monsters, I will take this opportunity to introduce you to Tony. Kevin nodded, that suited him perfectly, it was only 11.30 am and he didn't want to go home yet, he said to Axel. Come on then, I never went into his shop and I'm quite curious to see what's inside L.C. After they got up, they began to clean the room. They have put all their treasures inside Kevin magic bag and the monster bodies inside Axel's, and the only things that remained were Axel's torn clothes on the floor so Kevin added with a smile. Maybe we should take the time to buy you more clothes too. Axel, who was starting to lack clothes, said to him, after carrying him in his arms, which made Kevin swear again. It's a good idea, it's something that I rarely take the time to do, but I'm starting to really need some more clothes. Kevin finally capitulated and stopped struggling, he put his arms around his neck and said. Axel promises me that you will carry me like this only when we are the both of us. Axel's smile widened and he told him. I promise you babe. The goddess Cassandra had a lot of fun giving rewards her warrior spirit needed to become more powerful, she hadn't expected that the son of the god of destruction would fall for him, but it was for the best. She would make sure that these two become inseparable and she would help the son of the god of destruction to become powerful enough to protect her warrior spirit and win this war. If she hadn't changed their fate, this mage, even if he was destined to become the most powerful mage of his time, he would never have managed to attract the attention of this demigod, and the latter was destined to another shapeshifter, the Dragon King. 
Now that her warrior spirit had turned all their destinies upside down, the cards had been completely redistributed and she was impatient to see what it was going to turn out to be. Both of them weren't even at the start of their journey yet, she was going to let them have as much fun as possible before the flames of hell swept over this world. Kevin and Axel who both liked the simple things, chose to have their lunch in a restaurant with an all.u.can.eat buffet. They each took a tray which they filled with different dishes and once at the table they shared their meal. Axel said to him. When we will return to the Sun sect, I will take you around all the buildings so that you won't feel lost tomorrow. Kevin didn't want to spoil his fun and tell him that he had never felt lost in his life, and that if someone could find his way back in an unknown place it was him, so he said instead. Great, I can't wait to see it all. Axel also needed to tell him something important so he said. Kev, this year I'm in my last year and I have to become the tutor of a student fighter, I have chosen to be the tutor of Eric, so I will have to spend a lot of time with him, and if you don't mind, I'd like you to give him some advice too. To Axel's surprise, Kevin's expression has darkened dangerously. Chapter 38 Having to work on my jealous side you are listening at NovelFull.audio Kevin, who after hearing him say so casually that he was going to have to spend a lot of time with another man than him, felt a nameless fury seized him instantly. When suddenly the rational part of his brain reminded him of a piece of information that seemed very important. Eric. Alan's boyfriend. Axel nodded and Kevin looked relieved. No worries then. When I have the time I will go see him in his training to see how good he is and I will see how I can help him. Axel then asked him curious by his reaction. What is it Kev? Why did you seem relieved that it was Alan's boyfriend? Kevin answered him honestly. Well, you just told me that you were going to have to spend a lot of time with another man, the fact that he is Alan's boyfriend will prevent me from wanting to cut his throat every time I see him with you. Axel chuckled but his laughter stopped when he saw that Kevin seemed really serious. Babe, you can't be serious, are you? Binov calm Kevin said while frowning, he didn't know what was wrong with what he said. I'm dead serious, why? Axel put his hand on his cheek and said to him. You know that you can't kill just anybody anytime, you need a good reason for that. Axel was still caressing his cheek and he said helplessly, who would have thought that Kevin was the jealous type. You know, I'm pretty popular in the Sun sect and sometimes it's really annoying, but we can't do anything about it and you can't kill them, we can just endure it. You just have to remember that there is only you for me and don't let anyone make you think that there is someone else, otherwise I will kill them myself. Kevin grabbed Axel's sweater collar and kissed him fiercely, he told him. I'm sorry Axel but this feeling is disturbing me, like I told you before this is the first time I've been in a relationship with someone, and I feel that I'm going to have to work on my jealous side. But I can't guarantee you anything. I will just try not to kill anyone without a good reason. Axel then kissed him passionately and whispered in his ear. There is only you for me, and in a year we will be leaving the Sun sect so don't mind those who like to create trouble. Kevin nodded and then said smiling. I think we forgot one thing. We forgot that we were in a public place. Axel looked up and indeed everyone were looking at them shocked at their behavior. That didn't stop Axel from kissing Kevin's tempting lips one last time and then he said. Eat, we still have a lot to do before we get home. Kevin smiled at him and they continued to eat as if nothing had happened. Axel explained to him that Eric was going to pass the selections to be able to participate in the annual tournament in the capital, and that Alan was going to apply to be his tutor. Kevin was delighted, Alan seemed to be a very powerful mage and he was sure to learn a lot from him. When they had finished eating, they decided to go buy clothes first, Axel mostly needed sports clothes because it was with this kind of clothes that he felt comfortable to train and to fight, which occupied 80% of his time, the remaining 20% being reserved for his resting moments or for the obligatory ceremonies that he couldn't escape. Kevin bought for himself a few outfits as well, he had no idea what his classes were going to be like, and since he didn't like to stay with dirty clothes on him, in case his alchemy classes turned out to be a disaster, it was better to prevent than cure. Then, once their purchases were complete, 
Axel led him to Tony's shop and when Tony saw Axel, he came over to greet him warmly. Tony was surprised to see Axel with someone else, and when Axel introduced him to Kevin, he didn't hide the fact that Kevin was his boyfriend, on the contrary, he seemed very proud to introduce him this way which made Tony smile. Tony said to Kevin. Kevin make yourself at home here, if one day you come without Axel and I'm not in the shop, don't hesitate to ask my men to come and get me, I live just above the shop. Kevin was surprised to receive this kind of favor but Axel had told him that he had known Tony for several years now, so he said to him with sincerity. Thanks Tony, I won't hesitate then. Tony turned to Axel again and asked him as usual. Are you coming to buy or to sell? Axel grinned at him and said. To sell, it's all in there. Tony took the magic bag that Axel was showing to him and quickly opened it to see what Axel had brought him this time, and when he realized what were inside, it made him speechless. The magic bag was chock full of monster bodies of all kinds, weapons, but what caught his attention was the ore. It was nerudium, and at first glance it was of medium-grade quality and there was damn a lot of it. Tony asked to make sure Axel knew what he was doing, after all, Axel wasn't just a great customer, over the years a friendship and trust had grown between them. Axel, you know what is that or, isn't it? Axel just nodded with a big smile, Tony asked again puzzled. Are you sure you want to sell it? Axel said without hesitation. Everything inside this magic bag is for you, as long as you give me a fair price for it. Tony immediately said to him. Don't worry my prices are always the most honest on the market. Tell me, have you stumbled upon a dungeon again by chance? Axel laughed and told him the truth. Two days ago it was really by chance, but today with Kevin we went into the wildlands with the goal of finding a dungeon, and what you have there is what we have found inside. Tony knew that Axel was very powerful so he wasn't really surprised that he decided to loot dungeons on his own, huh no that's right, it seemed like it was an activity he shared with his boyfriend. Maybe he just wanted to impress him because this young man looked rather weak comparing to Axel, but he had to admit that Axel had great taste, Kevin was handsome. Actually, what surprised him the most was that Axel had waited this long to start looting dungeons on his own. Chapter 39 Let's practice a bit you are listening at novelfull.audio. Tony said to them. I need more time than the last time, there are several kinds of monsters and I need to take a closer look at this or. Axel then simply asked him. How long will it take you? Tony thought about it carefully before answering him, even with his two trusted men he would need at least two hours, no, rather three hours, there were really a lot of monsters inside this magic bag and maybe some of them will have magical crystals. Tony then said to him in an apologetic tone. Axel, I'm sorry but I can't do better than three hours. You can go for a walk or there is the training ground if you want just behind the shop, it's open so do as you pleased guys. Axel nodded to let Tony know that he was okay with it, and Tony went straight to his office to assess it all. After that, Axel looked at Kevin and asked him. What do you want to do Kev? Kevin took his hand and dragged him into the shop, he activated his perception skill and looked curiously at all the items to see if any notifications were going to appear, and if they could get items with good stats. On the weapons side there was nothing of interest to them, so he began to look around the shelves and discovered two hidden treasures. The first was a green jade ring and the second was a silver chain with blue reflections on it and it had a moon-shaped pendant. He took the items and showed them to Axel, telling him their stats. Item, high grade ring. Plus 500 soul force point, plus 30% resistance to magic. Item, dot high grade necklace. Plus 400 chakra points, for shapeshifter especially, this necklace can help you to control your shapeshifting. Kevin said to Axel happily. This necklace was made for you, take it, I will take the ring for me. Axel really loved to see Kevin's green sparkling eyes when he was excited, and he said to him after kissing him fiercely. I still can't believe that you're real, I wish I could someday meet the god who sent you here and thank him to have given me the chance to meet you. Kevin blushed, he still wasn't used to having someone caring and loving him and his heart raced again. 
Damn, he knew that Axel with his very keen senses could hear this kind of noise, it was really, really embarrassing. Axel kissed him tenderly this time and guided him to the counter to pay for the items. Kevin calmed down and when he heard their prices he was surprised, for high-grade items they were really cheap, the ring cost only 15 gold coins and the necklace 70 gold coins. Axel then said to Tony's employee. Tony told us that we can use the training ground, do you mind if we go now? The employee knew very well who Axel was, actually everyone knew who Axel was, he was the greatest fighter the Sun sect had ever had, and he won absolutely every competition and tournament he was participating in. The employee blushed and stammered that there was no problem and that he would tell Tony about it. Kevin started to frown and he was about to tell this employee to stop looking at his man that way when Axel put an arm around his shoulders and said to him. Come on babe, this is the opportunity to exchange our fighting techniques. Kevin immediately ceased to be interested in this poor employee and he put his arm around Axel's waist in a possessive way, he said to him excitedly. You're right, let's take this time to practice a bit. Once Axel and Kevin left this employee's face changed, it darkened and he clenched his fists, who was this man with Axel and whom he had called, babe, he had never seen him before. This man didn't seem very powerful, so how had he managed to capture Axel's heart so desired by the others? Kevin didn't know it yet, but he had just met the first person he would have to teach a lesson to dare to covet someone who wasn't theirs. Back on the training ground the atmosphere was very studious, Axel asked Kevin to teach him the technique he had used with his fingers but the latter refused, saying. If you think that it's a technique you can learn in a few hours you are wrong. I will teach you this technique but it will take time, you must first memorize not the vital points or even the parts of the human body but all the networks of veins and arteries. You have to memorize precisely how the blood circulates in a human body and only then will I be able to teach you the different moves to change the direction of it. I can assure you that it will worth the time you will put on it. I will teach you moves that can paralyze partially or entirely the body of your opponents, and obviously I will also teach you moves that can kill. Axel was a little disappointed but Kevin was right. He had already studied human body parts and their vital points but his knowledge of human body veins and arteries was very limited. He hoped that he would find detailed documents on this in the Sun Sex Library but his thoughts were interrupted by Kevin who smiled at him and said. Don't worry I will help you, I will draw the network myself and I will teach you the direction of the blood circulation. Axel looked at him dumbfounded. Do you also know how to draw? Kevin approached him and put a hand behind his head, he tilted his head slightly forward and whispered in his ear. Axel, do you really think that you can become the best assassin without any talent? Kevin bit his earlobe with the intention of punishing him but he had no idea that he had just aroused his man's appetite. Axel moaned and hugged him, holding him by the waist, he told him. Babe, if you really want to practice avoid doing this again, that was way too hot. Kevin blushed and cursed as he pulled away from him as if he had burned himself, he didn't think Axel would react like that to his teasing. Kevin said to him after having regained his concentration. Do you start or do I start? Axel didn't insist because he really wanted to study Kevin's technique with a stick and he would have plenty of time to play with his man once he got home so he just said. You start. Chapter 40 a skilled fighter you are listening at novel full dot audio. Kevin didn't choose a stick but a spear that had a sharp blade at each of its two ends, which made it deadly dangerous, especially in the hands of an expert like him. He started to use his technique and Axel was hypnotized, he watched Kevin's movements but like the last time, he couldn't understand it. To learn a technique it was relatively easy, you just had to decipher the movements of that technique until you could guess which one he would use next. Only, no matter how focused Axel was, he could never predict Kevin's next move, each time he thought he had understood his technique, he found that in the end not at all. Kevin stopped after 30 minutes and saw that Axel was looking frustrated, he laughed and came to him to explain his technique. Axel had learned to fight like in a military school with orderly and repetitive combat postures and sequences of movements. Kevin, as for him, had learned to fight in the street to survive, his movements were the opposite of what Axel had been able to learn, 
and to be even more precise, he had created this technique to be able to fight especially against the military. With unpredictable movements, he could easily break the rhythm of the fight and gain the advantage over his opponents. When Kevin explained all of this to him, he was far from being upset, he just needed to change his way of thinking and he had to completely change his fighting style. But Kevin didn't agree with him, he found his fighting technique really very good and he told him that it was enough for him to add some counterattack to precisely break the rhythm of a fight if he found himself to a disadvantage. And also, he told him that he should work on his speed of execution of his movements. When Kevin saw that Axel was looking at him puzzled, he explained that he had watched him fight, and that his speed was his strongest point without a doubt. So instead of wanting to change his fighting style he should harness that strength to its fullest and make the speed of his movements his most lethal weapon. Axel couldn't tell how he was feeling right now, he felt relieved and grateful. He was starting to stagnate and he couldn't progress anymore, but he had finally found someone who could help him to become even stronger. He then said to Kevin smiling to him. You were right when you said that the instructors of the Sun sect wouldn't have been able to teach you anything, you are much more knowledgeable than them, there is no doubt about it trust me. Kevin smiled at him and said. The most important thing is never to stop improving, one technique can always be improved, and some moves can be added to be able to face all kinds of opponents. Kevin added confident in his teaching skill. Axel, after I will teach you my fighting techniques and help you to combine them with yours, you will become untouchable. Axel's smile widened and he said. Let's fight then. Show me how to break the rhythm during a fight. When Tony went to the training ground he watched them a bit and was surprised to see that Kevin was doing so well, no wonder he caught Axel's eye. He cleared his throat to let them know he was there and they both stopped by mutual agreement, Kevin then said something that stunned Tony. Wow Axel, you have learned so fast, it was much better this way. And Axel's reaction shocked him even more, he was watching Kevin with a dazzling smile and a look full of adoration. Tony no longer had any doubt that Axel had fallen in love with this little fighter, so he said to Kevin as they walked over to him. Kevin I'm surprised, for your age you're already a skilled fighter. Kevin looked puzzled by the compliment and Axel chuckled before saying to Tony. He's a mage Tony, and he has just entered the Sun sect, I met him just after his test. But it's true that if he was to enter as a fighter, it wouldn't have taken long for him to beat us all. Tony was so surprised that he was rendered speechless. A mage. Kevin was a mage. And from what Axel had said he couldn't have been much over 18. He came to his senses and asked curiously to Kevin. What elements do you have affinity with? Kevin looked at Axel who nodded to him to say it was okay to tell him, so Kevin said. My main element is the lightning one, and I also have an affinity with the ones of water and wind. Tony hissed in admiration, this Kevin was obviously no ordinary person. Ha Axel, no wonder he has managed to catch your attention, if he is as good at crafting potions as he is to fight, you better keep an eye on him because everyone will try to seduce him. Kevin didn't understand why Tony said that but Axel put his arm around his shoulders and he said. Fuck you Tony, he is mine. Tony laughed out loud and Axel changed the subject. So, have you finished making your estimate? Tony nodded and handed them a paper where he had summarized it, he said. Take your time to look and if you are satisfied come and meet me at the counter I will pay you. He added before leaving them alone. For the Nerudium, this is the price I am ready to pay you right away, but you will probably make more money if you go to auction it, by the way it's probably what I'll do if you let me buy it. Tony then left and they both looked at the paper he had given them, for the bodies of all the monsters Tony was offering them the tidy sum of 117 700 gold coins, for their weapons 27 300 gold coins and he had found two magical crystals. O.org both were again of medium grade, and the first was large size and was worth 20,000 gold coins, while the other was medium size and was worth 10,000 gold coins. He had also estimated that the Nerudium was of medium grade and therefore worth 100,000 gold coins per kg. They had 1.7 kilograms which added the sum of 170,000 gold coins to their booty. 
Kevin asked Axel. Tony is really going to give us that amount, 345,000 gold coins is a lot of money, no? Axel nodded and said. Yes, that's a lot of money. Let's leave the Neridium to him, I don't want to waste any more time going to an auction house for it, let's go home babe. 